will now recognize myself for an opening statement. Mr. Chairman. Point of Last Friday, inquiry. without explanation, Attorney General William Barr Mr. announced Chairman. that Jeffrey Berman, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, was, quote, stepping down, unquote. This was, of course, untrue. Mr. Berman had not resigned. In a statement, Mr. Berman made clear that he had no intention of resigning and every intention of moving forward with his work without delay or interruption. He emphasized that point. He wanted to stay on the job to ensure that his work would continue unimpeded. In order to understand the stakes in the standoff, it is important to note that the work of Mr. Berman's office has included a number of criminal investigations aimed at individuals close to President Trump. Among them, the President's attorney, Michael Cohen, the President's inaugural committee, and Rudy Giuliani, the President's current counsel, campaign advisor, and direct line to Kiev. On Saturday, Mr. Barr attempted to fire Mr. Berman directly. Even then, Mr. Berman resisted. Only when he was certain that his deputy, a qualified career prosecutor, would take his place as acting U.S. attorney, did he relent and step aside. So what are we to make of these events? If this had been an isolated incident, if the Attorney General had simply misjudged the situation and thought that Mr. Berman would go quietly, then we might chalk up this episode to simple miscommunication and incompetence. But make no mistake, this was not an isolated incident. Early this year, after the President's associate, Roger Stone, was convicted of obstructing justice, Mr. Barr overruled his career prosecutors and recommended a lighter sentence for President Trump's friend. One of those prosecutors, Mr. Zelensky, will testify today about that experience. I was privileged to serve in the Department of Justice under two Republican and one Democratic president, and I am here because I believe that William Barr poses the greatest threat in my lifetime to our rule of law and to public trust in it. That is because he does not believe in its core principle that no person is above the law. Instead, since taking office, he has worked to advance his lifelong conviction that the president should hold virtually autocratic powers. That includes immunity from nearly all checks and balances and being able to accord special treatment to himself and his friends. One, another 30 seconds. In closing, it needs to be said that Bill Barr does regularly lie in ways that impact official action. Along with his continuing media project to make Americans believe that the FBI conspired against Donald Trump, his statements about the Mueller report, Jeffrey Berman's supposed resignation, and Barr's own role in the events in Lafayette Park come quickly to mind. But to me, Barr's crowning dishonesty Gentlemen's is the portrait expired. of Edward Levy that a recent New York Times article showed hanging on the wall of his conference room as though the current incumbent regular, has regular anything. Order, regular order, the witness will conclude. Regular order is right. We're way beyond regular order. The witness will continue. Can I have one more sentence here? By all means. Okay. But to me, Barr's crowning dishonesty is the portrait of Edward Levy that a Mr. recent Chairman, I would New York ask Times that, they, uh, that the sergeant at arms witness be conclude. called upon to stop the disruption of this meeting. I can't hear this witness. This is a very important witness. Yeah, witness well, he's way time. beyond and the chair time. has. And if the there are no rules about the when people has can the talk, authority, there's no not. rules about when you can make noise. The gentleman makes the. A good chair. point, and the chair will enforce the five-minute rule. Witness will proceed. The chair will is not enforcing the we'll five-minute rule. The witness will conclude. You, Mr. You chairman, this is outrageous. Conclude. Do you have no respect for the rules whatsoever? The witness will conclude. He's two minutes beyond concluding, and you don't let us have that kind of time. You gavel down immediately. You're being grossly unfair. This man had a written statement, and he knew to cut it to five minutes. He couldn't do it. Either we have rules or we don't. The gentleman will suspend. The witness will conclude. Conference room, as though the current incumbent regular, regular has order, anything. Regular order. The witness will conclude. Regular order is right. We're way beyond regular order. The witness will continue. Can I have one more sentence? Here By all means. Okay. But to me, Barr's crowning dishonesty is the portrait of Edward Levy that a Mr. recent Mr. Chairman, I would ask that, they, uh, that the sergeant at arms witness be called upon to stop the disruption of this meeting. 
I can't hear this witness. This is a very important witness. What yeah, well, he's way and beyond the his chair time. Has and if the there are no rules about when people can the talk, authority, there's no not? rules about when the you can make the, noise. The gentleman makes a, a good chair. point, and the chair will enforce the five-minute rule. Witness will proceed. Will proceed. Authorized under the rules of this committee. It certainly is authorized under the rules well, of this well, committee. Well, then uh, cannot the chair call in the sergeant at arms to maintain order when a member of this hmm? panel we'll, is we'll out of order. We'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll the move meeting. on to the next witness. Um, Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Elias. Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Elias. Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Elias. Parliamentary point of order, Mr. Chairman. There is no point of order. How do you know? I've not said one. Here we go again. The, the gentleman is completely out of order, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman will state his point of order. Point of order is, is according to the House rules, it cannot, a House chairman cannot capriciously determine the five-minute rule at the whim of what he wants. It has to be fairly and appropriately applied. That is the period of the House rules, and that is not what has happened. You, 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 can, you apply it fairly? I got about half of that. We are applying the five-minute rule as provided by the House rules. That's, you so you're ruling on my point of order? The gentleman has not stated the point of order. I did state a point of order. I stated the not point against. of order is the rules are being violated by a capricious chairman who is not following the rules of the House by arbitrarily deciding when the five-minute rule will be applied and when it will not be applied. You have not stated a cognizable point of order. The chairman has discretion. Mr. Chairman, you've not stated a recognizable way of running a committee in 18 months. So, I mean, let's determine it. The gentleman will suspend. The gentleman has not stated a cognizable point of order. What I saw that Roger Stone was being treated differently from every other defendant. He received breaks that are, in my experience, unheard of, and all the more so for a defendant in his circumstances, a defendant who lied to Congress, who remained unrepentant, and who made threats against a judge and a witness in his case. And what I heard repeatedly was that this leniency was happening because of Stone's relationship to the president, that the acting U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia was receiving heavy pressure from the highest levels of the Department of Justice, and that his instructions to us were based on political considerations. And I was told that the acting U.S. attorney was giving Stone a break because he was afraid of the president of the United States. I believe that was wrong, and together with my fellow line prosecutors, I immediately and repeatedly said so. Unfortunately, our objections were not heeded. I resigned because following orders would have violated the oath I swore when I took my job. To be clear, my concern is not with the sentence Mr. Stone received. I'm not here to criticize the sentence or her reasoning. My concern is about process. The Department of Justice treated Roger Stone differently from everyone else, and I was told that the department cut Roger Stone a break because of his relationship to the president. I take no satisfaction in publicly criticizing the actions of the Department of Justice, where I have spent most of my legal career. I have always been, and I remain proud to be, an assistant United States attorney. It pains me to describe these events, but as Judge Jackson said in this case, truth still matters. And so I'm here today to tell you the truth.